At the end of Britain's longest dead-end road is the peninsula of Noidart. It's as remote as any of the Hebrides, and with no roads and no communication, the only way onto Noida is by boat. And so, with only deer and golden eagles for company, no wonder then it's regarded as Britain's last wilderness. Over the next few days, we're going to be attempting to cross that wild peninsula by bike to the remote village of Inveree. Once we get there, it's a quick boat journey back here to Maleg and then onto the train, the Harry Potter train, back to Fort William, once regarded as one of the greatest train journeys in the world. Now, to do this trip is going to be pretty precarious, so I'm going to be calling on friend and ex racer Hannah Barnes. Uh, we've got eight hours to get across the Noida Peninsula. It's going to be so good and we have till mid-afternoon to beat the rain. So we've Heavy got rain. to get going. I'm glad, I'm glad you're upbeat about this. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's nice now. Eight hours kinda... to get across the peninsula and there's a bridge. A non-existent non bridge. Non-existent bridge. So we'll... This is, it, it's actually making me feel sick. Because if we, if we get there, we're halfway through that peninsula and there's no way across that river. We've got to come back and call the taxi driver back. <laughs> <laughs> There's no signal. Oh, no, true. <laughs> We're going to make it. We'll find a way. Take care. You are entering remote, sparsely populated, potentially dangerous mountain country. Please ensure that you are adequately experienced and equipped to complete your journey without, without assistance. assistance. <laughs> Can we do it? I'll assist you and you can assist me. Yeah, and the dog can assist us both. Yeah. <laughs> When you come to the river, yeah. okay, you cross a big salt flat and okay. then you'll see on the other side of the river, you'll see a road which is actually coming from the lodge. Where that road comes down to the river level and you'll see the corner of a wall, there's a 4D bit and that's the shallowest bit. Then you turn right and you go right up the man meadow and that's a long haul. Wow, Hannah, this really is out there, right? It's incredible. It's so cool, yeah. And do you know what? I think this is what e-bikes are good at, is these adventures. Absolutely. Like, within half an hour, we've really just blasted into the middle of nowhere. But now, <laughs> we're already in the middle of nowhere. Now we get through this last bit of forestry and we're on to open mountain. This yeah. is where it starts to get a little bit dicey, right? Well, yeah, definitely. We've definitely left to our own devices and we've got to be quite self-sufficient. Yeah. <laughs> before hitting the river crossing, which we don't know about. Fingers crossed. The tracks build us onto the open mountains. This was when things started to get serious. As we transitioned into a zone where there simply was no going back. We were in. Whoa, the last couple of hours really have hammered home the fact how far removed we are from the safety or, if you like, predictability of a trail centre. These really are big mountains. And you're going to take your hat off to the deer stalkers that live in this terrain. Hannah, it's a harsh environment, right? It's a really harsh environment. We've just been riding for, it must be two hours now. And oh, super technical terrain. Technical, hard, rough, boggy, pretty rough. I yeah. think like, every single foot metre is a hazard. It's something to overcome. 
It's so hard, it's hard going, isn't it? Yeah, you're always concentrating and looking out for bogs, rocks, and yeah. I'm pretty hungry. There's no less. I'm hungry. Have you yeah. brought any food? I thought you brought the food. Josh, Josh you brought have, the food, right? Have you got the sandwiches? It's a long 16 miles, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be skimming across those bogs. There's definitely a bog technique there, right? There seems to be. Avoid the Maybe, path, just skim. I think skim. you're too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I tell you what, so we just skimmed, actually, talking about skimming, we just skimmed underneath a, a couple of Munros. Uh, Garb Kioch Moor. What's that yeah. one there? Skirnakish. Skirnakish. Wow, 1,040 sure. metres. <laughs> I tell you what, you wouldn't want to be doing this later in the year, you right? You would not, it'd be freezing. I mean, we've been walking through rivers. We're just drenched, so I think that, any colder. I yeah. think that was pretty much wilderness terrain up there. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> we're not even a third of the way. No, we're not. We've got to go around two more headlands. That way. Look at it, yeah. look at it. <laughs> it's proper out there. But it's okay, we've got two jelly babies between us, we'll be fine. I'm glad you brought the dog biscuits, we're going to be eating them yeah, within we'll the hour. Eating Lumi's biscuits. <laughs> Our progress through some of the oldest mountains in the world was steady. We were simply in awe of some staggeringly beautiful terrain. Through his saddle, we saw the sea come into view for the first time, Noidart gently rolling out of the Atlantic. Now we found out really last minute this morning before we set off that a really important bridge on this route had been taken out by uh, high water. However, we did speak to the, um, to the stalkers and uh, they said it was probably doable uh, through, through some of the water. So we've arrived at a bothy, uh, halfway on our trip, we've reached the sea. Uh, however, at this point, the only way out of here is to either go backwards or across that river. Now we've bumped in a bunch of guys here from Germany and one of them's got a really bad ankle and um, this shows just how, how, you know, how dangerous and how isolated a place like this can be. So uh, next part of the journey is really crucial. Can we make it across the river? And today's getting on, Hannah. It is. Lights fading. Uh, We're we taking longer than we expected yeah, anyway. Because it's been really hard going, Pretty, right? Really tough. We had come to expect the worst at the crossing of the River Karnach. The approach is wide open, exposed to mountains now towering like Norwegian fjords. The reality was knee level at the worst, but ahead of us was a real test, as some of the team began to question the judgment of taking on a mountain pass in such poor weather. Tension engulfed the group. This is pretty cold. Huh? Having mean, to get up and get down because it's pretty cold. Trying to keep spirits up, keep Lumi fed. Pretty hideous, Hannah. Hideous. So we've just come down off a really challenging, uh, what would you call it, Hannah? Oh, I don't know, it's too cold. To Honestly, we're, we're so cold. And uh, I'm so glad to get off the top of that hill, Hannah. Very glad. It's it's only got an hour of daylight, so this day has taken us so much longer than we have. So we've got a long way to go. So that could have gone horrible, horribly wrong. So in rapidly fading light, we actually made it across Noidat here to Inveree on the west of the island. We managed to get to a hotel and dry our clothes off and have that much needed super hot shower. Uh, so here we are at the uh, remotest pub restaurant in Britain. Early morning and the Western Isles Ferry arrives with supplies and to carry the locals across to the mainland. It's the only public transport off Noidat. We climb aboard and bounce back across the Atlantic with the raw, untouched mountains of this remote peninsula staring at us. They are still wild but seem in a much gentler mood than the day before. journey 
from Noidat on the Western Isles Express, that boat across back to the mainland. An amazing, amazing journey. And now we're gonna to head to the train station to get on the Harry Potter Express. The line opened in 1901 to serve the West Highlands, but was closed in 1967 as part of modernization, which said that diesel was far more efficient than steam. In 1984, British Rail reintroduced its steam service. In 1995, after privatisation of the train network, the operating licence was given to West Coast Railways. 41 miles between Maleg and Fort William, the Jacobite train was used in the Harry Potter films as the Hogwarts Express and it used this very route. Uh, Florence, what's all the fuss about with the steam train? There's a lot of people here. It's a very, very busy train. It's a Harry Potter theme. It's the, the views, it's the whole package. It seems like there's people from all over the world here. All over the world, they come from every corner of the world just to travel on the Jacobite steam train. Yeah. Right, we better jump on, aren't we? Jump on, yeah. Enjoy <laughs> the ride. <laughs> Hannah, that was a pretty challenging few days, right? But here we are, rolling first class on the Harry Potter <laughs> Express. Heading home. In, in one of the most beautiful environments in the world, right? It's incredible. It's mm -hmm. mental. It is. And I didn't realise, actually, we were in one of Europe's last wildernesses mm -hmm. the last few days. Yeah, it was pretty out there. Yeah. Um, let's talk about what we did. Um, like, we travelled we travelled by a miserable taxi driver, and then we started going into the woods, and everything, we, it, was, it was a stalker's track, right? Quad bike yeah, track. Mm -hmm. And then... And then we went on to open mall, uh, open mountain, sorry, and and then there's some pretty tough, precarious, challenging terrain. And yeah. I think you've got to be careful with an e-bike going into places like that, right? Yeah, definitely, because you, you're able to get way further into the wilderness quicker because you have the extra assistance. Yeah. But at the same time, then you are out in these really challenging environments yeah. a lot quicker and more able than before. But then you're out there and you often have to get your bike up and over a mountain and then there's, there is the walk mode which is amazing but also sometimes it's not really um, you're not able to use it so you, there's a lot of pushing and, yeah, yeah, and you're pushing, pushing. <laughs> it's a really really heavy weight if you yeah you, so. know, you know yesterday afternoon we were in it we were in a difficult position yeah. we pushed about you know we pushed a couple of thousand feet up a really steep bank it was tough I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm really sore today <laughs> it's gonna take a long time to dry out from that one yeah and, and get over it <laughs> yeah so here we are at our final destination, Fort William, HQ, Hannah Barnes' hometown, home to all those World Cup downhill races from 2002. So I think all that needs to be said really is, Hannah, thanks for an amazing few days. Thank you, Steve. Absolutely really out there. Cool, yeah. um, if you want to see more e-bike adventures, check out this one I've done with Doddy down here. And there's also the Mid Wales trip to the Dorothy Valley. That's down by there. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, subscribe to EMBN if you've not already done so. Hannah, time for a beer. Time for beer.